Equestrian Talk. This is Missy speaking. That's actually my tag. Um, how is everybody doing? Um, if you've been following my blog recently, you'll know that my horse, the Ginger Giraffe, got attacked on Friday by another horse. Um, he's okay. He's just kind of covered in a lot of bite marks, and um, he actually has a really deep cut on his heel. It's kind of like above the heel but below the fetlock joint, and um, he's on two re weeks of stall rest until that heals up because the vet's worried about an infection getting into his tendon sheath, which would mean that we would have to treat the entire injury as a joint infection, which is really serious and really bad. I'm actually not wearing a hat today, which is really weird. Um, but anyway, back to Gigi. Um, he'll be okay and everything. He's actually kind of pissed off because he's in a stall for two weeks and he hates stall rest so much like if if you followed my blog back whenever he got the cornea scratch like he is just absolutely resentful of um stall rest so he's okay except for being pissed off but i think we can all handle that um so originally i was gonna do these things with topics that you guys presented but um, considering how I haven't gotten much feedback on that, and because this incident just happened, I really feel the need to stress um, herd separation and understanding whether or not your horse is a dominant horse or a submissive horse. Because depending on which one it is, um, you have to approach that horse in different ways and you have to understand how it's going to react to other horses. Um, so the situation with the ginger giraffe, uh, the horse that attacked him is called Snoot. He also has a tag on my blog. Um, it's uh, just tagged Snoot. Um, but anyway, Snoot is... Um, the best way to describe him would be to say a proud cut. Um, he has extremely stud-like behavior and he is extremely dominant. Um, he's turned out with Prima and the dwarf planet Harley right now. Yes, Harley is a dwarf planet. Um, and the reason why he can be turned out with them and nothing has happened to them as of yet is because, for one thing, Prima's young and she can hold her own, and because she's a mare, he's not going to boss her around as much as he can because since he has stud behavior, he is thinking about breeding, and if he hurts her, as much as he hurt the giraffe, then he's not going to be able to breed with her and produce a baby, even though he can't actually breed because... So, you know. Um, and then Harley is 18 hands, and Snoot is 14.1. So, really, I mean, if he pisses Harley off enough, Harley's going to break his face open. So, you know. Um, and then... The giraffe has always been really submissive. Like, he sees a fight coming and runs. He doesn't like conflict. I mean, you just have to give him a mean look and, and pin your ears and he's gone. He leaves, he's just whatever, man. So, the only reason that I can think of of why Snoot would attack the giraffe in this way is because um, Prima, the mare, she really likes the giraffe. Like, whenever I turn them out together, which has been a couple times since the giraffe has been isolated from Snoot, um, Prima just attaches him, herself to him. She follows him around. He doesn't really care, but um, she follows him around. She doesn't want to be separated from him. She's very close to him. So um, whenever the herd's mixed, which was an accident, somebody left the gate open and it uh, left the gate unlocked and it blew open. Um, it caused Prima to go running to the giraffe which meant Snoot saw the giraffe as a threat to his mare. And so the only reaction that I can think of that seems to be valid is that Snoot would attack the giraffe because he's trying to get his mare back. Um, if you haven't been following my blog and you don't know, um, the giraffe has bite marks all over his body. His, he's got one here on his neck. Um, all on his shoulders, on his flanks, his hindquarters. He's just covered in bite marks. Most of them are superficial, except for the one on the heel, which is wrapped. And then um, he actually got run into a barbed wire fence, so all across his chest is just 
crisscrossing barbed wire cuts. Don't worry, he's had his tetanus shot, so we don't need to worry about lockjaw or anything like that. But the this wouldn't have happened had not had the gate been locked. Now we know we kind of suspect who left it unlocked and that person isn't really a ranch person so they can't really be blamed for not knowing the ranch rule of if you find a gate that's locked and closed then whenever you pass through it you lock it and you close it back and all that they don't know that rule um but this really would have been avoided had that gate been locked and that's why it's so important to know how your her your horse will react in the face of other horses. If you have a, an extremely submissive horse, then you really need to consider keeping him away from overly dominant horses. Like, the giraffe can be turned out with Derp, who is dominant over the giraffe, but Derp isn't overly dominant. He's dominant in the sense of he'll walk up to the giraffe, pin his ears, and giraffe walks away. You know, it's fine. There's, there's no conflict there. But if you've got a horse that really feels the need to assert his dominance, and you can't stick a submissive horse with them. You can't just say, oh, they'll work it out. They're fine. They're animals. No, you're going to get an injury kind of like the one that we got. And it could, my horse is out for two weeks and we had a show in two weeks and now I'm going to have to withdraw. And that's, you know, that's really devastating to me because I had a lot of money invested in this and I hope I can get most of it back. So, um, yeah, I mean, just understand your horses people don't just assume that because they're animals they'll work it out and everything will be fine and dandy because the one time it isn't could be devastating we're lucky the giraffe survived we've had another horse that was overly dominant that chased a horse into a fence and the horse that was chased into the fence the way that he ran onto it he cut his ex I think it was his extender muscle in his forearm he cut it down to the bone and it was hanging out and he had a chunk of his pectoral missing and the injury was so severe that he had to be put down you know had my ex-boss actually known anything about turning horses out in the introductory stages that you go through to observe how the horses react to each other it could have been avoided but it wasn't and we lost a horse because of it you know so it could be anything as you know oh well my horse got beat up a little bit to my horse is out for two weeks to my horse is dead so yeah anyway but the giraffe's gonna be okay so that's the main thing um I think that's all I'm gonna do for this video I'm kind of tired and I have to go get the giraffe ready soon so um anyway this is Missy with 15 hands and counting um we're with a equestrian talk I'll see you guys next Sunday and be sure to leave an ask in my uh, in my ask box with a topic that you want um, two topics that I'm really planning on going over at some point it just depends on which one goes first is going to be modern dressage and versus classical dressage and um, visually impaired horses there's going to be a whole series on visually impaired horses that's going to start with cornea scratches which is kind of how I became involved in horses that are more than just 50 percent blind you know missing one eye and uh, I think that's all I got. I think. I'm pretty sure. I have a cat. I have a cat. So, she says hi. Actually, she's pissed off. Anyway, Missy here, and Missy's leaving. Bye, guys. Keep drinking coffee, stare me down.